In this screencast video lecture, we are going to see the points related to flagella and its biosynthesis. What is flagella? They are long, thin, spiral appendages that are free at one end, whereas attached to the cell in the other end. They are generally associated there with the motility or movement of the cell. Bacterial flagella are long, thin, that is around 15 to 20 micrometer in length and 15 to 20 nanometer in diameter. It changes depend on the species of the bacteria. A single flagellum can be seen well through a light microscope. They can be stained by using special staining techniques. They are found in gram positive, gram negative bacteria and also in the archaea. That is the third domain of the life. A few differences existing between the bacteria as well as archaeal flagella. Basically, archaeal flagella is referred as a archaeolum. Archaeal flagella are significantly thinner compared to that of the bacterial flagella and they measure about 10 to 14 nanometer width. But till date, the structure of the archaeal flagellar motor is not known. Next, we look at the point related to the flagellin protein and its difference. In bacterial flagella, single flagellin protein is present, whereas in archaea, different types of flagellin proteins can coexist and some archaeal flagellins are glycoproteins in nature and the amino acid sequence of this Flagellin proteins are totally unrelated compared to that of the bacterial flagellin. Interestingly, archaeal flagellins share certain molecular features with that of the bacterial type 4 pili, which commonly involved there in the motility of the bacteria. Next, we look at the function of flagella. It is mainly for the motility or movement of the bacteria. The mechanism here is the chemical energy that have been obtained from the proton during the course of metabolism is converted into mechanical energy by this flagella. Flagella can be attached to the cells that results in different patterns as shown below. They can be of a single type which is referred as a monotrichous flagella which occurs in Vibrio cholerae. Sometimes a tuft of flagella can be present at one pole of the cell which is referred as a lophotrichous Bartonella basically formis is the name of a bacteria that possesses this kind of a flagella. Ampitrichus is stuffed at both the ends of the cell. It occurs in certain spiral cells such as spiralum serpents. And peritrichus, a classical example is the Escherichia coli in which the flagella has been distributed throughout the cell of the organism. Next we look at some other kinds of flagella, say for example endoflagella. This kind of flagella are occurring in the spirochetes, which generally move with the help of a axial filaments. These axial filaments are in turn consists of endoflagella that have been emerging from the poles of the cells. They consist of bundles of fibers that arise at the ends of the cells, especially beneath the outer sheet. The spirochete flagella fold back from each pole onto the protoplasmic cylinder of the cell and it remains there in the periplosm. It propels spirochetes in a spiral motion, a type of a movement similar to that of a corkscrew moving through a cork. Next, we look at the structure of flagella. Flagella are not straight but are helical in nature. If you flatten the flagella, they show a constant distance between the adjacent curves, which is referred as a wavelength. And this wavelength is a characteristic pattern for the flagella in any given species of bacteria. The filament of bacterial flagella is composed of several copies of protein called as a flagellin. The shape and wavelength of the flagellum is in part determined by the structure of the flagellum protein and it is also associated there to some extent the direction of rotation of the filament of the flagellum. Some flagella consists of more than two types of closely related subspecies of flagellin proteins that vary in a molecular size between 20 to 60 kilodalton. The variation in the size of the flagellin is also noticed between the bacteria. Say for example, enterobacteria tend to have large molecules of flagellin 
whereas the bacterial species that lives in fresh water found to have a smaller molecular size of the flagellin proteins. If you carefully analyze, flagellin is highly conserved in amino acid sequences in different species of bacteria. It suggests that the flagellar motility has a deeper roots there in the evolutionary domain of the bacteria. A flagellum consists of several components and they move by rotation, much like a propeller of boat motor that have been propelling the movement of the boat. Now, we look at the structure of the flagella. Base of the flagellum is structurally different from the filament. There is a wide region at the base of the filament which is referred as a hook. The hook consists of single type of a protein and it connects the filament to the motor portion that have been present at the base of the flagella. The motor is anchored in the cytoplasmic membrane and cell wall. It consists of central rod that passes through a series of rings. The rings are referred as a L ring, P ring, MS ring like that. In gram negative bacteria, an outer ring called as a L ring is present which is anchored to the lipopolysaccharide layer. Second ring is referred as a P ring which is anchored to the peptidoglycan that is to the cell wall. Third is a set of rings which consists of MS and C rings that are located within the cytoplasmic membrane and cytoplasm of the cells. In gram-positive bacteria, which lack an outer membrane, only the inner pair of rings are present, that is, rings concerned with P, M, S and C alone will be present there in the gram-positive bacteria. Surrounding the inner ring and anchored in the cytoplasmic membrane are a series of proteins called as a mode proteins or motor proteins. And there is another set of proteins called as a FLI, that is flea proteins, which functions as a motor switch. Mode proteins refers to motor, FLI proteins refer to motor switch. It helps in reversing the direction of the rotation of flagella in response to the intracellular signals the cells receive. And lastly, we look at the points related to flagella biosynthesis. Several genes are required for a flagella synthesis and motility in the bacteria. For example, E. coli and Salmonella typhurium, which are referred as a model organism to study about the flagella motion, found to contain about 50 genes that are essentially required for the motility. These genes include those that encode structural proteins of the flagellar apparatus export of the flagellar components through the cytoplasmic membrane to outside of the cell and regulation of many biochemical events that are surrounding the biosynthesis of the flagella. A flagellar filament grows not from the base. However, it grows from the tip. Comparatively, a human or an animal hair will be growing only from the base. The MS ring is the one which is first synthesized and inserted into the cytoplasmic membrane, then the other anchoring proteins are synthesis along with the hook before the formation of the filament. Flagellin molecules are synthesized in the cytoplasm and they are moved up through a 3 nanometer channel that have been present inside the filament. And these flagellin proteins are added to the terminal point of the growing flagellum to form a mature flagellum. So, this is the point I told that the flagella grows from the tip and not from the base. At the end of the growing flagellum, a protein cap exists. The main function of this cap is to assist the flagellin molecules that have diffused through the membrane in order to organize or crystallize the flagellin proteins at the terminal point to form into a new filament. Approximately, 20,000 flagellin molecules are required to make one filament in a flagella. The flagellum grows more or less continuously until it reaches its final length. Broken flagella still rotate the cells and help in the movement and they can be repaired with a newly formed flagellin unit when it passes through the filamentous protein channel and replace the old and worn out flagellin units.